Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will go through the basic rack commands in Oracle database. Again, this is not a complete list. I have covered the most important commands. If you think that I have not covered some of the important commands, excuse me for that. The cluster rack commands can be mainly divided into this set. There are other commands such as Cluffy, OLS nodes, etc, etc. Again, this list is not complete. CRS CTL commands are used to manage the cluster, SRV CTL to manage the resources, OCR config to manage the OCR, OCR check to troubleshoot with the OCR, OIF config to manage the network interfaces. GV$ views, you would have already worked with V$ instance or V$ databases or all the V$ dynamic views. In the, in the rack cluster, we have GV$ which is global views. And this particular views allows you to get the information across your cluster. So you have GV$ instance, GV$ database, GV$ session, etc, etc. If you want to look at the status of your cluster, you can use CRS CTL stat rest T. T stands for table. If you omit T, it will give you without the tabular format. Stat stands for status, RES stands for resource. So CRS CTL status of your resources in a tabular format. If you want to stop the cluster on a local node, you will say stop cluster. If you want to start, you will say start. If you want to check the cluster status, you will say check. Now, if you want to do it across all the cluster, you will use the minus all option. If you use the minus n option, you can you can use you can use the minus n option to specify on which node you want to. So from one node, you can manage the cluster on the another node using minus n n stand for node option. If you want to start uh, the CRS or HAS service, you will use the start CRS. Both commands will be, the effect of both the commands will be exactly same. The HA services will be stopped using this particular command. Now remember one thing, when you stop the cluster, the only the cluster resources will be stopped. The HA resources will be still be up. So when you stop the cluster, the HA resources still will be up. If you want to stop everything, you have to use stop HAS. So if you want to reboot the server, you stop the cluster and then you stop the HA services. The enable and disable auto start. Basically, this particular parameter config uh, controls when you restart the Oracle server, the database server, the actual Unix server, that time whether the cluster services will come automatically online or not, this is controlled by the enable disable auto start. So if config CRS will tell you whether it is enable uh, the auto start is enabled. If you enable it, auto start is enabled. If you disable it, you auto start is disabled. If you disable it, when the next time that server is rebooted, the cluster resources will not come online and you will have to manually start the cluster resources. The CRS log is in the grid base. Oracle base is nothing but the grid base. Diac CRS node, you have to replace the node with the CRS trace. In this particular location, you will find the CRS. So if you have any issues with the CRS, etc., you can find the log here. OCR. So if you want to get the location of your OCR, you will use OCR check config. If you want to verify the integrity of your OCR, you can use OCR check. And if you want to, you can use the Cluffy command also to verify the integrity of your OCR file. The if you want to see the backups, you can use OCR config show backups. And if you want to take the manual backup, you'll use OCR config manual backup. So you will use show backup command uh, to show all the backups, either the manual backups or auto backups. By default, Oracle cluster takes the OCR backups every four hours, every day, every week. And you can take the manual backup if you need it, need one. You if you by default, the backup config location is configured uh, and if you want to change it, you can use the backup lo OCR config backup location, new location. This particular parameter will control the, uh, the new backups, either automatic, either manual. So all the backups will go to the new location. Existing backups will stay where they are. It will not, this particular command will not touch the existing backups. If you want to add a new OCR location, you will say OCR config add um, the location, whichever location you want. Mm -hmm. If you want to delete the OCR location, and again, I would like to highlight, you can have five OCR locations. So if you want to add a new, you'll use add. If you want to delete, you'll say delete. 
if you want to replace an existing you will say OCR config replace and you will give which location you want to replace now remember one thing if there is only one OCR location you cannot replace it you, you cannot replace only single OCR location Oracle allows you to have five OCR locations the voting disk you, if you want to take a look at the voting disk you can use CRS CTL query CSS vote disk if you want to replace it, there are two options. You delete and add or you replace it. You can replace the voting disk using the new voting disk. If you want to take the check the contents of OLR, you can see, see that from OCR dump minus local HD out is for the display. The OCR content, OLR contents will be shown on your screen. If you want to export the OLR to a file, you can use OCR config local export command specify the file name and if you want to import it you can use the ocr config local import file name file name is your choice and the location you can specify the location the location of olr the olr location is in the grid based crs data host name olr so you have to change the grid in the grid based crs data host name you have to change the the name of the uh, host here and under that you will find the olr and under that you will find the the local olr if you want to see the information about scan you can use SRV CTL config scan command it will give you the scan ips and the scan information if you want to see the scan listener you will use config scan listener if you want to see the status of your database you will use SRV CTL status database minus db unique name of your database it you will get the status of your database if you want to start the database, you will use start database. If you will, you want to stop the database, you will use the SRV CTL stop database. Now remember one thing, you can't specify the node option here. The Basically this one will start the database across all nodes, stop database across all nodes, status of the database across all nodes. If you want to start the database in a particular mount, so when we start the database, you can say startup mount, startup no mount, etc. If you want to start that, you have the start option. So you can specify the start option or you can specify the minus O open minus O mount no mount restrict. So you can specify one of these options and the database will be open in that particular state. Similarly, when you stop the database, you have shut normal, shut down normal, shut down transactional, shut down immediate, shut about. So you can specify the stop option or you can specify the O you, minus O option to stop the database. And when you stop the database, you can specify under which op mode you want to stop the database. If you want to see the status of the instance, you will say SRV CTL status instance, name of the database, node instance, you will spe and remember one thing, you can't specify node and instance together, either you specify the node, either you specify the instance. Now, the beauty of this command is if you want to see the output across multiple nodes, you can specify the node name. You, you can't, you have to specify the node or instance, one of this, you can't just say SRV CTL status instance, you, it's not like the status of the database where you don't have to specify any node, you have to specify the, you have to specify the either the node, either the instance, and you can specify multiple nodes using node name list comma separated, or you can specify multiple instance using instance name. Now, again, I, I'll repeat again, you can't specify both node and instance, either you specify the node, either you specify the instance. Similarly, for the start instance, you will use the start instance. Similarly, for the stop instance, options are exactly the same. Now, when you start the instance, you can start the instance in open mount, no mount mode. So you have, when you start the instance, you have these particular options. And when you stop the instance, you can say stop normal. So similarly to the shut, uh, startup open, startup mount, startup no mount, you have sh shut normal, shut transactional. So the, you, can, you can control the behavior using the start option. Now, again, you can't specify node and instance together. Either you specify the node, either you specify the instance. If you want to see the config of your database, you will use SRV CTL config database, then minus DB unique database name. So with this, you can see the config of your database. If you want to kill the connection in the cluster database, you have to specify the alter system kill session, SID, serial number, and the instance, the instance where the connection is. So you have, and from where, where you will get it from the GB dollar session, you will get the instance ID. The parameter in the, when you want to change the parameter in the cluster, you can, you can specify the SID is equal to star. SID is equal to star means this particular parameter will be changed across all the cluster nodes. If you want to change it across one particular SID, you can change it across particular SID. By default, whenever we execute, from which node we are uh, 
changing the parameter only on that particular load the parameter will be changed so we can control we can control the way the parameter gets changed now remember one thing is that there are some parameters which needs to be same across all the cluster nodes and then there are some parameters which can be which can have different values so rec allows you to have different parameter values for some of the variables not all of the variables some of the variables you can have different variables across the cluster you can start the asm using srvc to start asm you can stop the asm using stop asm uh, you want to see the status you can see the status you want to see the config of asm you can see the config using srvc tl command now remember one thing sometime srvc tl stop asm will not work because asm has got some hard dependencies you can stop the asm using stop has or stop crs services this is for the node apps node apps is nothing but the vips the your ip configuration such as your scan ip listeners etc so node apps will start stop you can see the you can start the node apps stop the node apps status of the node apps config of the node apps you can use this node apps command if you want to get the info interface con configuration so what is your public ip what is your private ip basically not ip configuration what is the interface configuration you can use oif config if you want to know for which in what are the interfaces which has already been defined you can use oif config get if there is oif config set if del if etc there are multiple variations of this particular command if you want to get the virtual uh, ip you can use srvc tl config node apps minus a option to get the vip information in your cluster if you want to verify the connectivity across the nodes you can use cluffy comp node connection minus and all across all the nodes in the verbose mode if you want to get the the information about all the nodes you can use ols nodes a command if you want to get the local node information you can use same ols nodes using minus l option and if you want to get the cluster information you can use ols so what is the rack cluster name you can use ols nodes minus c option this uh, these are the some of the config commands which we have already seen config node apps to get the vip information again you can use config vip as well if you want to get the network information config network scan information scan if you want to get the scan listener information config scan if you want to get the the HAS uh, release version of the uh, HAS, you will use HAS release version, uh, software version, and for the CRS active version, CRS software version, CRS active version. You can use these options to find what is your current release version, what is your software version, and what is your active version. If you want to add a cluster node, you will use add node.sh. If you will want to delete it, you will delete is using crs ctl delete now remember one thing before adding and after adding the cluster you have to perform specific step, set of steps so this are, this is not a complete list of commands but i just wanted to give you what commands are used to add a node and delete a node from the cluster now that we have seen all of these commands let's go back to understand how is our cluster configured so that will give you a better idea So let's take a look at our cluster. So you can see we have got two nodes, uh, DB1 and DB2. These are the host names. On DB1, that is the instance C1. On C2 is the instance on DB2. Both instances are open and the databases are in the read-write mode. Now, I will also show you the configuration of our, uh, our uh, IPs so 1.101 is the public IP 0.101 is the private IP virtual IP is 111 and the scan IP is 121 22 23 remember scan IP is 21 22 and 23 and the virtual IP is 11 and 12 now and I want to show you the how the PMON process looks on both the nodes so here on here you can see let me make it big a little bit bigger like this I'll make it just give me a minute yeah minimize this and if I run PS you can see we on the on the on the node one I got plus ASM one plus ASM two and if I do the similar thing on node two I'll I'll get the ASM2 and Aura 19C2. So the ASM1 is running on DB1 and ASM2 is running on DB2. So we have seen all of this. Let's let's now understand 
the CRS CTL stat rest T that is the first command that you probably will run and it will give you so if you if stat for status so I can also type status and I can also type resource and if I don't do minus T you can see the output is coming like this now if I want to see this output in a tabular format I'll have to just add minus T option and I'll get this so on node 1 everything is online online on node 1 so these are the this is the resource name and this is the status of these resources so looks good the next command that we want to see is the is the stop cluster now remember one thing if you can if you just say stop cluster so before stopping the cluster let's see the status of the cluster using check cluster minus all so run this command and you can see it's giving the host name and the the status of the cluster now if i if i just say if i just say crs ctl stop cluster and i'll run this if i just say this if i just take this command and if i run it like this what it's going to do is it's going to stop the cluster on the local node now if i want to stop the cluster across all the node i'll say minus all and if i want to stop the cluster on a particular node so from node db1 from node db1 i'm going to stop it on db2 so I can say stop cluster. So once this the cluster is stopped, now if I run the check uh, status of the cluster, so let's say so right now it is still showing me online, but give it a minute. So we are stopping on DB2. So we are stopping on DB2. I forgot about that. So what we'll do, we will run this particular command from node 2. And that's done and if i now run this one you can see on the node 2 so so on from we ran it from db1 so from here we then but we stopped it on db2 so for the for the db2 it is saying cannot communicate it is stopped and for the db1 it is online now the remember one thing stopping the cluster services doesn't stop the ha services so i'll show you the status of ha services on both the nodes so let me run this command on on this nodes and this is this is where the cluster is also up and this is the node one where we have stopped the cluster services but you can see ha services are still online if you wanted to stop the ha services you will stay you will say stop has i'm not going to do that so so stop has is going to stop the ha services now remember one thing these particular commands don't have the node option only this command has the node option or minus all you can't stop HAS across all the nodes in the cluster so this particular command doesn't have the node option or minus all option this particular commands controls the as i told you this particular command controls the the uh, auto start so config HAS will control the auto start so you can see the auto start has been enabled and if you say disable HAS then what will happen next time when this, this particular server is rebooted so now auto start is disabled so you can see auto start is disabled config HAS shows and now next time the server is restarted the HA services will not come online so we will keep it in the enable state enable state unless we want to manually control it we will keep it in the uh, in the auto state so that's good if you want to see the location of your CRS uh, uh, CRS log alert log you can go to so first set the environmental variable and then you will go to the oracle base which is nothing but crs uh, grid uh, or the grid base so oracle base under that you will go to the diag under that you will go to the crs under that you will find a location with the node name under that you will find again crs under that you will find trace and under that you will find alert log file and you can take a look at this particular alert so tail minus 10 alert log and you can see this and i'll tell you the location so this is the this is oracle base diag crs the node name again crs trace that one will give you the the information about your crs log if you if you wanted to check the your ocr ocr config so you can use ocr config check it will give you this particular command will give you um this particular command will only give you the the locations of your sorry ocr check 
minus config. So this particular command will only give you the list of OCR that is configured. Now, if you run OCR check without minus config, it will also do the validation of your OCR. So you can see the, the OCR integrity check has been done. You can also do the integrity check using the Cluffy command. But remember to do the Cluffy command, you have to log in as the grid. So let me go log in as a grid. Clear the screen and let me run this and this one will unable to list. Uh, OK, so that is <laughs> the reason is we have stopped the cluster. So we for, I forgot. So we have actually stopped the cluster on this node and it is not able to connect. So we should actually start the cluster and then we should actually verify our. We should uh, verify the uh, this one. So give it a minute for the cluster to start. And the cluster has completely started. So now if I do the clear screen and if I run the same command. And we should be able to get the integrity verifying OCR integrity. So it's right now checking the integrity of our OCR. So you can see verification of OCR integrity is successful. Now what we can potentially do is we can we can if you wanted to actually right now you right now the OCR you can see the using OCR config check OCR check minus config you can see the OCR is only configured on one location if you wanted to add a, a different location so let's say I want to add this particular location and OCR actually allows you to store it five different locations so if I run this particular command and then if I run the OCR check config now you can see I have added a new location called ASM data one. So now we have got a OCR on two different locations. If I wanted to replace this, this with a new location, I could, I could, uh, I could run another command. So let's say I'm going to replace ASM data one with ASM data two. So I'm replacing the OCR location. And you can see the ASM data one is replaced with ASM data two. And if I wanted to delete the additional location, you can't delete the only single location. So if only one location is there, you will not be able to delete it, but we can safely delete the second location. So that's done. Now, if I run the OCR config check, you can see that. And if I wanted to replace the only single location, the ASM OCR with let's say ASM data two, etc. It is not going to work. You cannot replace the only location. So this is very important. You have to add the second location and then you have to replace the original location if you ever wanted to replace the original location. So remember about that. Now we will also understand the backup concept of the OCR. So the OCR config show backup. This particular will show you the backups of your cluster the automated backups as well as manual backups right now the backups are happening under asm ocr so if i wanted to change that particular location so let's say if i wanted to store my backups on asm data 2 you can change this and this particular command will 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 change the location of all the backups so if i try to now take the manual backup and that's done and the new manual backup will go to the asm data too so remember the new manual backup so you can see the new manual backup went to asm this is the latest backup that we took it went to the asm data too so this is the way to change the location now remember one thing when you change the backup location the existing backups will stay where they are only the new backups are getting changed so that's we have learned the concept of backup look show backup to see the backups manual backups to take the manual backup and uh, backup location OCR config backup location to change the new location. We also saw the concept of adding the OCR. So add, delete and replace. We already saw this. Now to check the word disk, we'll use CRSCTL query CSS word disk command. That one will give you, give us the location of or the information about our word disk. And you can see our word disk is right now ASM OCR. Now, if you wanted to change it, you can use DLS, delete and add, or we can replace it. So let's replace the OCR disk. So what we are going to do is we are going to replace the ASM OCR with ASM data too. So let's replace it. And then we, once the replacement is complete, so you can see successfully replaced. Now, if I run the query vote disk, instead of ASM OCR, our voting disk is ASM data too. So we can replace the vote disk as well.
Now, if I want to know the the look contents of uh, if I want to know that the contents of local OLR, I can use OCR dump local STD out. So that one will give me the contents of your local OLR. So let's run that particular command. I'll minimize this. So let's and this one will give me the contents of local OLR. So all the information about ASM logs, the VIPs, etc., nodes which are inter participating in the cluster, all of that information, the local OLR will be given. So OCR dump local STD out. If I wanted to export the OCR config, I can use OCR config local local export. And if I wanted to import, I can use this import command. The 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 I'm not going to show you. These are pretty straightforward commands. If you want to know the location of OLR, grid base, CRS data, host name, OLR. So let's let's go. Grid base is nothing but Oracle base when you are in the ASM environment. So let's show you that. So that's done. So CD dollar Oracle base. Under that you will find CRS data, and under that you will find the node name. Under that you will find CRS again. Sorry, not CRS, OLR again. And under that, you will find the OLR. So you can see here. So let me show you where I went. So the, this is the, the grid base CRS data, node name OLR. Under that, you will find the local OLR. So this is the local OLR. So grid base CRS data, host name OLR. If you want to see the configuration of the scan, if you remember our scan IP is 21, 22, 121, 122, 123. If you wanted to see this configuration of scan, you can use CRSCTL config scan. This one should give you three IPs, 121, 122, 123. And you can see the output is 121, 122, 123. If you if you wanted to get the output of scan listener, you can use the same config scan with the scan listener. I'm not going to show you. If you want to see the status of the database, whether the database is up and running, and you can see the database is actually up and running on both the nodes. If you wanted to see the status of the database, now our work on the root commands is done. I'm going to get out of the root because all of most of the commands I think are done. So I'm going to log in as the Oracle user because now we are starting with the database command. So SRV CTL status database again, as I told you, this particular command doesn't take the node. So if I say aura 19C and minus N and I say, give me the, the then you can see minus N is an invalid option. So now if I run this particular command, it is running on both the nodes and you can see the same output from here i'm going to run the same query it is running on both the nodes so status database will give you now if i want to start the database you will say start database the start database will start it across all the cluster nodes if it is already not started if it is if one of the node is already started then it will ignore and it will start it on the remaining nodes so and stop database will stop it across all the nodes the when you okay so let's actually do one thing so what I'm going to do and I'm going to do, do some tricks. So I'm going to stop the instance and we will co come to this particular part. So I'm going to stop the instance on node two. So let's say I'm going to stop the instance on node two, which means the database on the node two will go down. So let's after this, we'll run this particular command. Give it a minute. Now, if I if I run the that command is completed, if I run the status database, you will see that on the node 2 it is not running on the node 2 it is not running and if i run the output here you can see we are only getting one node now if i say start database now so on one node it is already started so let's if i say start database what is going to happen is like the on the node 1 it is already started so it's going to start the database on the node 2 because on the node 1 it is already started so start database you don't specify the node name you can't specify the node it is going to start the database across all the nodes so give it a minute so let's see if it is uh yeah you can see on the both the nodes it has started so the this is the start database the way i told you how it behaves now as i told you the the start database when you start a database you have the option to start the database in a particular mode you can start the database in a particular mode so you you can use either start option or the mode and again, similarly, you, when you start the instance, you have that particular mode. So let's do something. Let's actually stop the instance on one of the node. Again, I will choose node two. So I'm doing on DB2. I'm stopping the instance. 
So now the instance is stopped on node two. So now it, the, it was up and running on both the nodes. Now, if I run this particular command, you can see it is only running on one node. Now, what, what we can do is when we start the instance, we can actually specify that, let's say start instance on node two and minus O, and we will say, go in the mount mode. Don't start it in the, don't start it in the open mode. So what is going to happen? The instance is going to start on the node two, but it is going to go in the mount mode. So give it a minute. That's done. So let's run this particular command and you can see on the node two, it is in the mounted mode. So on the node one, it is in the read write mode on the node two, it is in the mounted mode. So we can, we can control the behavior so we can control. So while stopping and starting similarly, while starting and stopping the instance, we can control the behavior status instance will give you the status of the instance. Now, what I wanted to tell you is like this SRV still start instance, stop instance, we ha you have to specify the node name or instance name, you can't specify both and I'm going to show it to you. So let me if I if I try to if I want to see the status of the instance on node two, I can do that. And if I wanted to see it on both the nodes, I have to give the nodes in the comma separated list. You can give multiple. You can't, you can't omit the node option. You either need to specify the node or instance now, or you can specify the instance. So let's say instance is aura 19 C one, and you can get this. And again, this one also can take the comma separated value. So you can say aura 19 C two. So you can specify multiple instances. But what you can't do is you can't specify instance and node together. So let's say I want to get the, you can either specify the node or instance. Then same goes with the stop instance, start instance. So well, when you start the instance, you have to either specify the node or instance. Now, and you can start the instance on multiple nodes or stop the instance on multiple nodes. Now, when you start the instance, you the similar to the, when you started the database, you have the option open mount you can start the database on open mode mount mode no mount mode or shut normal shut transaction so you have the options when you stop the start the instance you have you have the option to specify which mode you want to start in you want to stop the instance you can specify the the way shut normal shut transactional you can specify that now again when you start or stop you have to either specify the node instance not both remember that if you want to see the config of the database, you will use srvctl config database command. So srvctl config database command will show you the configuration of the database. Now let's see. I don't think so. I have that here. So let me type that for you. So srvctl config database minus d aura 19c. It is going to give us the information about password file, the configured nodes, the configured instances, the, whether the database is administrator managed or policy managed, uh, whether the type is rack, where is our password file, where is our SP file. So it gives us all of this particular location. So config database gives us. Mod there is a modified database which allows you to modify the configuration. I'm not going to show you. Now let's, uh, so now I got another user. So let's try to connect. You can see I got a user called test. So let's try to connect using this particular user. So connect. I'm connecting to the and looks like there is a wrong password. So let's say yeah, save connect. So I'm connecting to the database using the test user. And now if I wanted to get the connection information about the test user, so you can see the test user is connected to the session uh, instance one. So if I wanted to kill this user, I have to give the the SID along with the serial number, which is 09171. And then I have to specify at which instance I want to terminate the user. So at which instance I need to specify system kill altered. Now, if I, if I try to run a particular query, your database connection has been reset. So SQL developer by default tries to reconnect. So we killed it and that's why the connection was terminated. So that's how we disconnect the user. We have to specify the, we have to specify the at instance whenever we, we use the alter system kill command. Now, let me go to the Oracle home slash DBS and let's do something. Let's actually see if there is an init file for this particular database and probably init file is not there. So what we'll do, we will connect to, we'll set the environmental variable. So aura env, aura 19c1. So that looks good. Let me 
connect as sysdba and let me create a p file from sp file and clear sorry exit and clear and then now if i do ls minus this one we can see this particular file so if i now vi this particular file let's see if we can and you can see that uh, the parameters that we have got most of the parameters are across both the nodes some parameters have different values and star the star means basically these particular parameters are same across all the nodes and the whenever there is a there is an instance name dot which means this particular parameter is for the instance one this particular parameter is for the instance two now if you wanted to if i wanted to change the parameter what we need to do is like let me show it to you so let's if i wanted to change the particular parameter across all the nodes you will run the you will run the alter system and you will give the sid is equal to star so if i run this particular command this particular command means that i am changing the parameter across all the nodes so before changing that particular parameter let's see if this particular parameter is there in the in the SP, uh, p file so cat init grep minus i sec and you can see we don't have that particular parameter so let me now connect to the sql plus and run this particular command and i'm saying change this particular parameter across all the nodes and at the same time if i wanted to change the particular parameter across only one set i'm going to do that as well so job queue process i'm going to change it across only one node now if i run the cat command you can see okay so uh, okay so we did not create the we did not create the p file from this so let's create p file from sp file after changing we did not create and you can see star sec so star means it is across all so star means across all and if i run the job queue so if i do job it should be across only one node which is aura 19c so and i can take a look at that particular files which i'm going to show it to you anyway so you can see now we got the job queue across only one so we don't have it the value for c2 so we have set it for only c1 and let's see where is the sec case uh, case incentive login you can see it has got a star which means it is across all the nodes so this is how we change the parameter in the cluster so we can change it use on all the nodes using sid is equal to star or a particular node and there is the information here if you don't specify any of this then by default it is on the node that you executed the command stop asm start asm so this is the command so we will see the status of the asm so let's go as the git and let's run crs ctl status of the asm what exactly oh so SRV ctl These commands are so confusing. So SRV CTL status ASM, and you can see ASM is running on node one and two. And if you wanted to stop the ASM, you can use the stop ASM, but it has got the hard dependency. It will not work. And this is the configuration. Where is your ASM password file? Uh, where is your backup of the password file, the listener, etc. So this is the configuration of your ASM. Now the star. I'm not going to show you the node apps command, but what I'm going to show you is one of the command SRV CTL config node apps command. And that one will give you the information about your VIP. So it will give you the information about your VIP. So let's run config node apps. And you can see it is giving the VIP across both the nodes 11 and 12. Remember, I told you that our VIP is 111 and 1122. And I'm going to show it to you right now on the screen. So grep minus I VIP. And you can see VIP is 111, 112 and the whip is 111 112 so config node apps minus a will give you the whips information this particular oif config commands will give you the oif config commands will give you the information about your interfaces which are so you can see we have got two interfaces of uh, 192.168 which is a, a private and asm this is the public this is an extra uh, one which you can safely ignore now, if you wanted to check the connectivity, uh, sorry, if you wanted to get the, the, so you can see the, the interfaces where, which is used for cluster interconnect, as I told you, 0, .0 0.0 private and ASM and 1.0 is for the public. Now, 
if you wanted to verify the cluster uh, config uh, connectivity, you can use as a fluffy command to check the node connectivity across all the nodes in the verbose mode. So you can see it mostly it is it's all looks good. So the connectivity is good. And if there are any issues, you can you can find out. So looks like everything is passed. So we are good. So this is the this is the cluffy command. You can use the the cluffy node connection uh, all command to get the connectivity across all the nodes. OLS nodes command. There are multiple variations of OLS nodes. So let's take a look. OLS nodes will show you the nodes across the cluster, all the nodes across the cluster. So you can see node one, node two, and both the clusters are S is for the status, I for the instance number. This is the node. So node name, instance number and status and you can see it is active if you wanted to get the information only about the local node you can use the minus l option so and it also gives you the inter interface option ip address and the status uh, and l for the local node so if you wanted to know the name of the cluster you can use this one and our cluster is rack cluster so let's see you can see we our name is rack cluster we have already seen the config node apps config scan config this one so i'm not going to show you all of that and I'm, what I'm going to see show you is the release version and the software version and that there is an active version as well. So we can see the software version. Sorry, there is a mistake here. And you can see this is our software version. And the and if you wanted to see the network information, VIP information, you can see. So let's say if I wanted to get the VIP information, I can run srvctl config srvctl config vip minus n db1 so using this you can get the vip so 111 is the vip on node 1 112 is the vip across node 2 so this is the there are this this config commands will give you the configuration of your in uh, this one and these commands will give you the version and as I told you, add node and this one is a complicated. If you if you wanted to add a node or delete a node, you have to go through a set of processes which we cannot cover in this particular tutorial. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. I hope you learned to use the basic commands. I hope you you after watching this particular tutorial, you will be able to administer your rack environment using these commands. There might be some commands that I have not covered or listed here. If you find across any of these commands, such as SRVCTL status of the rest service, if you want to start the service, you can use SRVCTL start service. If you want to relocate the service, you can use SRVCTL relocate service. So there are, if you wanted to set the new network interfaces, you can use OIF config network. If you wanted to start the cluster in a in a exclusive mode, how do you do that? If you wanted to replace the, if you wanted, if the OCR is corrupted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know you can start the cluster in a exclusive mode and fix that so you know so that there are multiple of the commands that i have not covered but i try to cover the basic rack commands that you would use in your day to environment again thank you for watching see you in next tutorial till then enjoy and if you do like the content that i am uploading if you do like my channel make sure to subscribe to my channel till then see you and see you in next tutorial bye bye